Whether you love an excuse to dress up or would rather live in sweats, everyone needs to put on some dress shoes at some point. The good news is, no matter if you're attending a formal wedding reception or looking your best for a job interview, your shoes don't have to be uncomfortable. The right dress shoes will match your style, complement your closet and won't leave you hobbling the rest of the day. Finding comfortable dress shoes isn't a rocket science but it does require a keen eye to find the best style, brand and shape that works for you. Uncomfortable shoes can cause blisters, sores and chafing short-term injuries you don't want to experience while walking your daughter down the aisle or giving a new client a tour of your company office. If worn over time, ill-fitting dress shoes can also cause long-term damage to the joints of your foot. This can result in conditions like plantar fasciitis, which happens when the band of tissue at the bottom of your foot is inflamed. Some people think fancy shoes automatically means a lack of comfort, but that doesn't have to be true if you know what to look for. Ideally, a good pair of dress shoes even if they are the highest heels in your closet should also be your most comfortable and last you several years. The parts of a shoe can be divided into two, the rest the upper which is most visible, and the sole, which is the part that contacts the ground. On the upper, there's the toe where your toes fit into the shoe. In dress shoes, the toes are commonly rounded, pointed or slightly square. The vamp is the part that's right behind the toe. This is the part of the shoe most susceptible to creasing. Behind the vamp is the quarter. This part encompasses the back half of the dress shoe, from where the lacing is to the back of the heel. Lastly, the top line is the top edge of hole where your feet enter the shoe. Even for high heels, the anatomy remains relatively consistent. There are some subtle differences, like the top cap of a heel, for example, but the main components are the same. Even if you've been a tried and true size 9 for a while, it no not hurt to measure your feet to be certain. You have a few options for measurement, go to a shoe store and use their Branek device. Visit a podiatrist and ask them, or measure your feet yourself. Measuring your own feet is straightforward. Simply place a piece of paper on the ground and put your foot on top of it. Use a pencil to trace the outline of your bare foot. Then measure the length and width of your foot outline with measuring tape. From there, you can consult an online shoe guide to figure out your size. Arch height is another key factor when it comes to comfort. If the arch of your foot is flat when you're standing or sitting, then you have flat feet. If the arch of your foot is notably high when you stand, then you have high arches. Most people fall somewhere in the middle. Similar to shoe size, you can consult a professional or figure it out yourself. First, dip your foot in water and then step onto a piece of cardboard. If your footprint is completely filled in from left to right, then you have flat feet with a very low arch. If your foot arch is barely visible on the cardboard, then you have high arches. What does that mean as far as comfort? Those with high arches should look for a shoe with an extra cushion. Platforms can work well for that. Also consider investing in a few insoles made specifically for highly arched feet. Those with flat feet would also benefit from special insoles. Insoles aren't just for people with high or flat arches. The extra support lends comfort to any pair of shoes. Note that there are a number of different insole sizes and types. Insoles are common for athletic and orthopedic shoes, but you can find them for dress shoes and heels, too. For the latter, you'll want to look for an insole with a low profile. Heels are notorious for being uncomfortable, but they don't have to be. You can keep the heel height low and opt for 2.5 inches or shorter. Kitten heels are eternally stylish and lend a feminine feel to any ensemble. If your budget allows, consider heels made with suede or leather. Both of these materials will mold and stretch to the shape of your feet over time, unlike synthetic leather. As opposed to stilettos, a block heel will give the heels of your feet better support. Measuring your feet will confirm if you need a wider fit, but if shoes tend to squeeze, then it has fair to say your feet run wide. Even if they don't tee, it has not unwise to find a shoe with a wider fit. If a shoe is tight across the top or tight at the laces, then go wider instead of a size bigger. 
you can always forgo heels altogether and choose stylish flats, instead. If you feel that flats lack some pizzazz, opt for a fine print like leopard or snakeskin. You can also look for a pointed flat, or flats with other embellishments like an ankle strap, an elegant buckle, or testful studs and sequins. Otherwise, a tasteful loafer is always an option. Platform shoes, if appropriate for the occasion, are another great alternative. They elevate you while distributing your weight evenly across the whole foot. Like platforms, wedge heels are also more stable than regular ones. Heels 